Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Binu, uh, and I'm an adjunct professor at uh, Western Michigan University in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I'm giving a talk on a highly sensitive screen printed strain heat for micro strain detection. And this work was done by a collaborative effort at two centers. Uh, the first one is the Center for Advanced Mark Sensors and Structures, and the second one is the Center for Advancement of uh, Printed Electronics. This is an outline of my talk. I'll start with an introduction uh, to structural health monitoring and the current state of the art in the different strain gauges that are being used, as well as an introduction to uh, printed electronics and how it can be used to make novel uh, strain gauges. I'll then uh, present the experimental part for this project, which includes the design, the materials used, the device fabrication steps, surface morphological characterization that was done, as well as the results. And then I'll fi finally conclude with the summary and some potential future work that can be done. As you all know, structural health monitoring has been used uh, in a wide variety of applications, uh, but it's mostly used for civil infrastructural uh, monitoring. Some examples are um, buildings, bridges, uh, as well as in the automotive field, it's used in cars, train tracks, and aircrafts. Through structural health monitoring, it helps us to monitor the lifespan of the different uh, infrastructure that's used in these assets. It can detect uh, crack propagations, and structural failures that occur on these structures. It also helps to implement uh, strategies that can avoid or mitigate fatal calamities that can occur uh, because of the failure of these devices. And by using these kind of sensors uh, for structural health monitoring and by having an historical data, uh, we can also use it to predict or improve structural design for future assets that we're planning to build. Some of the most common sensors that are being used for structural health monitoring are temperature sensors, pressure sensors, accelerometer, strain gauges, and tilt meters. In this project, we're focusing on strain gauges and trying to develop a novel strain gauge using printed electronics. Some commercial strain gauges have been uh, made uh, which are uh, flexible in form factor, uh, and the typical sensing materials that are used are constantine, which is a copper nickel alloy, and karma, which is a nickel chromium alloy. Uh, the common substrates that are used for flexible strain gauges are polyamide, and glass fiber reinforced epoxy phenolics. The typical fabrication method used is lithography, and the gauge factors that have been achieved for these commercial uh, strain gauges are between 2 to 2.13, and these are based on loads of around 1.18 kilogram, which is industry standard for commercial strain gauges. Uh, some of the disadvantages associated with these are that it typically involves complex fabrication processes, and that's because typically it's made using uh, subtractive processes which is, comes under the lithography fabrication method. And it requires relatively expensive uh, fabrication facilities, highly trained personnel, and there is more material usage, again, because of the subtractive nature of the fabrication process. So uh, we envision using printed electronics for making novel uh, strain gauges. And some of the advantages associated with this are, is that it can be used for rapid prototyping of devices. It is a simple fabrication process because the number of steps involved are less. And that's because additive manufacturing uses are used where the required material is deposited only in the places where you want the material. And these devices can be fabricated at uh, low temperatures. Uh, most of the cases it can be fabricated in room temperature. It also lends itself to roll-to-roll -to -roll, uh, fabrication processes. And because of this, large area devices can be fabricated. And flexible materials and substrates also lend towards this process. And because of all these advantages, printed electronics can be seen as a relatively cost-efficient method to fabricate some electronic components when you scale it up for mass uh, manufacturing or production. And these images that are shown here are some of the devi other devices that we've made using printed electronics in these two centers. We have a temperature sensor, which is one at the bottom. We have an organic thin film transistor. We have a humidity sensor, printed antennas and transparent substrates and a circuit with uh, crossovers that we printed. And we used a variety of printing methods to come up with these devices. But the focus for this talk will be on strain gauges. So um, at these two centers, we have different printing methods available. Uh, we have flexography, gravier, screen, and inkjet. And we use a mix of these uh, printing methods for the different layers to fabricate different sensing devices. And the images show the co co corresponding printers that we have available at the labs. The table on the right shows some of the most important properties and parameters associated with each of these printing methods. Uh, and 
depending on what ink, what substrate, what application we have, we go and look at these as a lookup table and we decide which printing method we need to use for a particular layer in the printing process on the device. And this is, these numbers are based on the instruments that we have in our facilities, but these numbers can vary depending on uh, what kind of equipment uh, you have in the lab. So there are, it's, it's not a one-stop solution uh, for making a particular device. Depending on the materials, substrates, everything varies. And a knowledge of this is very important for fabricating layer on layer devices for flexible sensors. For example, uh, if you require a device or a layer with a high ink thickness, we would opt for a screen because screen has the highest ink film thickness that uh, is being provided. And uh, when you have an ink that's very highly viscous, again, we opt for screen because that is the only printing method that's capable of uh, handling those high viscosities. And uh, for the image carrier, which is uh, the first line, there are different uh, costs that are associated with these because for the inkjet, you can work with digital images, whereas for all the other three, you have an upfront cost of making the screens of the plates, and that adds on to the cost for the fabrication process. But in this project, we'll be using screen printing because of the inks and substrates that we had, that we have characterized, and we'll be using that to make uh, screen strain gauges. This is the design for the strain gauge that was fabricated in this work. The dimensions are shown on the schematic, but the overall pattern dimension was 9.2 by 30.4 millimeters, with the gauge dimension being 9.2 by 10.6 millimeters. The grid line width and spacing was maintained at uh, 0.2 millimeters, and the contact pad pitch, which is the pitch at the bottom over here, was 2.75 millimeters. And a side view of the uh, fabric uh, designed strain gauge is shown here, where there are three layers. We'll have a substrate, there's a sensing layer or the electrode layer, and then there is the encapsulation layer to protect the device from environmental uh, degradation. This is a list of the materials that was used. The first one is a flexible uh, substrate TPU from DuPont. Uh, the corresponding model numbers are also provided in the table. Uh, and the second one is carbon ink from Applied Ink Solutions. This was implemented as a sensing layer or the electrode layer. The third one was an encapsulate ink from Applied Ink Solutions. And this was used as a passivation layer. The fourth one was a conductive epoxy from NG Chemicals. And this was used for soldering the wires to the sensors so that uh, we can connect it to a data acquisition system for collecting the data. These are the uh, fabrication steps. The first step was a preprint substrate characterization where the flexible TPU had to undergo a heat treatment process to stabilize the substrate. And this was done for 10 minutes uh, at 110 degrees Celsius. The second step was to screen print the carbon uh, ink on the substrate. And once it was deposited, it was thermally cured for eight minutes at 120 degrees Celsius. And the printer that was implemented for this was an HMI printer as shown in this uh, photograph. The third step was to screen print the encapsulation or the uh, passivation layer. And this, uh, once it was deposited again with the screen printing method, it was UV cured at 17 feet per minute in a conveyor belt equipment. And it had a 30, 300 watt per inch UV lamp. And the device had to be UV cured for two passes so that the optimum curing parameters were uh, required, acquired. And a photograph of the fabricated strain gauge is shown here where you can see the carbon that's printed on the TPU substrate. The surface morphological characterization was also done for both the sensing layer and the encapsulation layer. Uh, the thickness was around 19 uh, micrometer and 26 micrometers for the sensing and encapsulation layers. The roughness was around 3.5 and 1.7 for the sensing and encapsulation layers. This was the experiment setup that was used. The strain gauge uh, that was printed was bonded onto a flat aluminum bar to create a cantilever based uh, setup. It had a fixed uh, beam and loads were applied to monitor the uh, uh, strain. It was connected to an Agilent LCR meter, which was in turn connected to a computer for data acquisition. Uh, uh, this was the uh, equation that was used uh, for gauge factor calculations and the constant equations are also shown. But this table over here shows the corresponding components associated with the cantilever beam setup. But I'll skip through these because this is uh, more common. Uh, this was the uh, response that was obtained from the strain gauge. So the first graph shows the dynamic response over time uh, for resistance change. And uh, weights varying from 0 0.2 kilogram to 1.8 kilogram were applied. And the dynamic response was monitored. And the second graph on this side shows 
uh, a summary of the different sensors that we tested. So in this case, we uh, tested three different sensors and each sensor was tested for three times and it was randomly selected from different batches to uh, check for repeatability. And the result is summarized at the bottom for the different loads, the corresponding strains that were applied, the change in resistance, and the percentage changes that were obtained. So for the 1.8 kilogram, uh, change in resistance was almost uh, 6 kilo ohms and the percentage change was 2.6%. And the reason the 1.8 is important is because that is what is being used for commercial sensors as a benchmarking uh, load. The corresponding gauge factors were also calculated and is shown in this graph here and it is being summarized here. So uh, for the 1.8, uh, gauge factors as high as 20.76 were obtained and this is because of the particular ink and the flexible TPU substrate that we used that we were able to achieve uh, this gauge factor. Uh, for benchmarking for commercial strain gauges, I had initially mentioned that it was around 2 to 2.13, but we were able to achieve around 20.76. So uh, as a conclusion, we were able to successfully fabricate a printed strain gauge uh, using screen printing method on flexible TPU substrate. And this is a summary of all the parameters that were measured for the varying loads in this experiment and uh, we were able to achieve 20 gauge factor for the 1.8 load. Um, there is a lot of investigation that can be done specifically in terms of characterization for this device. Some of them are to investigate the effect of humidity and temperature as well as larger strains on the printed strain gauge. So this is an ongoing work and with that I would like to thank you for your attention and open the floor for any questions that you may have. Thank you for the nice talk, uh, Murad from IMS Chips uh, in Stuttgart. So I was wondering if your gauge factor will saturate after uh, certain loads, and um, this changing of the gauge factor at small loads, can it be calibrated somehow? Or, uh, uh, yeah, um, we expect it to saturate uh, after uh, when we apply larger loads. Uh, for this particular work, uh, we did the characterization from uh, 0 0.2 to 1.8 uh, kilograms. And the reason that we did was to benchmark it against a commercial sensor. But some of the future work involved is uh, to study or investigate the response of the strain gauge for higher, larger strains. And then we would be able to find out at what particular point it saturates. Uh, 